Hello everyone, welcome to this new episode. Today we'll just follow up what we have done earlier uh, when I was talking about garage duels, how to hack it, how to deal with rolling cards. Uh, so we will in this video, we'll, the purpose is just to minimize the attack um, because earlier we have been using a computer and a USB. Uh, but of course, you can always have like a small computer like that and a USB. But today, uh, the, the thing that I wanted to do is just to show you how to replace the computer in here and this USB by something that is in this box. And so let me just present you, I mean, I'll just show you uh, the result of these things. So you're probably curious about what is in this box. So let's see that together. First, I will open it and discover a nice form factor device, which is the Panda rep that you can see in here. And this device will actually do the job of attacking my garage doors that you can see in here. But before attacking anything, we have to take it in hand. In order to do that, we need to open a little bit the case in order to power on this device and see that after, after removing the case, we can see a nice little uh, battery, which will actually um, also power the device without any external battery, which is quite good because everything fits on this you know, little form factor, which is quite great. The only thing that you will need thereafter is just you know, a mobile phone, which will command it in Bluetooth, which is quite great. I like it. Um, so yeah, this is like a small switch, which will just power off and power on the device. Then you can just like close everything in order to protect it a little bit. And then you can choose uh, any of the uh, provided antenna. Uh, for example, if you want to uh, use the uh, three, well, 300 megahertz um, frequency, you can use uh, this, um, this antenna or this antenna for the 868 megahertz. And for the uh, 433 megahertz, um, you can directly uh, switch with this one. So now let's see about the Android application. So all you need to have is a Panda RF and also a smartphone with the application Panda RF. You can launch in here. So now we can see how it looks on the left. And once it is run, uh, you will see a lot of notification. Uh, maybe it will be annoying at first, but it's very important for you to read all these notifications in order to, uh, to see how the Panda RF is working and uh, also how to set up it uh, properly. So I'm really suggesting you to, you know, to read it uh, like that. You will not, I mean, if you have an issue, you will be able also to debug it. So we'll close all of them. We'll also make sure that everything is disconnected and scan uh, for devices around. We see that the only device that is around is the Rock Pro, which is this one. Uh, so we'll just like connect to it by clicking on this uh, device. If you have trouble also to connect your device directly, uh, to the to the cell phone, you can directly also use um, a USB cable, um, or you um, yeah. And also, if the Panda RF does not have a battery anymore, you can also charge it with this cable, which is quite great because um, you know in the meantime when you are doing some attacks, you can also charge the the, the Panda RF, so which is cre uh, really great. But when you have like a charge battery, which is what is great also is that you can hide this Panda RF to, you know, to any pocket. You can also hide it anywhere, anywhere where, for example, your, your smartphone can connect to it uh, via Bluetooth, for example. So now let's go to the, um, to the spectrum analyzer tab. And in this tab, we will just like make sure that the frequency, the band that is in use is the right one. Uh, and also that the frequency uh, is also the right one. So like that, we can be uh, much more precise. We can directly specify the uh, three, the four, three, three point ninety two megahertz, which is also present in here in the back of this uh, remote. So let's precise the frequency in here. Wait a second, and like that. Now we can run the spectrum analyzer. All right. So now you will see also uh, you know some lines. 
You can also disable some lines. Uh, for example, you can disable the RSSI if you want. Uh, you, you can disable anything you want. Um, I recommend you also to just use, for example, the max. Uh, generally, the max uh, um, ever RSSI uh, is, and the max RSSI is important also to, to launch because it also, I mean, it, it conserves a trace of what happened before. So um, I'm suggesting you to generally um, use all these devices like that. You will have a, an idea of what uh, what was going on uh, because in here you don't see any waterfall. So uh, you will you will you will use that trace in order to see what happened in uh, which frequency, etc. So now let's just send some comments. So I would just like um, take my panda ref a little bit far away and send some comments over the air. So like that. And then you, for example, you will see just by looking at the right frequency, you will see that something happened in here, which is quite great. And you have also a trace of the average RSSI and also the max RSSI in here, which is quite good. And you can also zoom a little bit to see, for example, what happened. But the thing that you will probably uh, observe is that, for example, when you send a signal, oh, this command is a little bit now exhausted of all the, the push that I have done. But yeah, it's quite difficult to, to, to realize that we are facing a uh, 2FSK signal as we saw in the past, right? So this is the downside uh, of this spectrum analyzer uh, on the Panda RF. So that's why also I'm suggesting you to use, for example, the Panda RF um, once you have, for example, analyzed a signal. So like that, you are already prepared to attack, for example, your target. But the Panda RF comes with a lot of features which allows you, for example, to detect uh, the frequency. And I'm suggesting you to use that because at some point, for example, from devices to another devices, you may have some shift uh, because of, you know, the precision of the clock, for example. So, yeah, uh, I'm, or, you know, even if you have uh, the right frequency, I mean, you have specified the right frequency in here, um, I'm suggesting you to use, for example, the detect and then push some button and see, for example, in here, that the frequency which is in use, what, which was detected is this one. So yeah, if you use the, the exact frequency, you will probably have some issues. You can try to use that, but I'm really suggesting you to use the detector feature um, because it does the job of detecting the right counter frequency for this device. Then we'll do some measurements. The measurements will also, uh, for example, we'll just like go back in here. We'll just like take the, uh, the default option, which is, which is ASK or OK. So yeah, normally a signal, which is a OSK or OK, um, has like just some uh, some change in the level of the signal. Um, so, and the amplitude of the signal. But if you have two FSK, you should, uh, if you remember, you should have like a two uh, sort of frequency. That means that, for example, for zero or one, you have, you know, a distinct frequency for that. Uh, and you know, uh, we, ma we, we say that we have a mark and a space, and this is something that you see clearly, for example, in FFT, that it's uh, a little bit difficult to see in, uh, in there with the spectrum analyzer, but you clearly see that, for example, with a waterfall uh, on GNU radio, as we have seen earlier. So now let's see with the measure uh, feature that, you know, is a little bit magical. Um, uh, it helps you, for example, to detect some parameters, but yeah. For, for the FSK, it's quite difficult because you will probably uh, do a lot of tries before you detect, for example, FSK with the da right data rate. And in here, for example, you see that the detection stops as at you know the modulation SK OK and data rate, which is probably not good. Uh, so if you try to capture the, the, the data, you will see only garbage. And as we know, we are facing a 2FSK. So generally, it's also why I'm suggesting you to use that once you, you have work on a, on a specific signal with GNU Radio or any other uh, uh, tool, uh, once you have, for example, detected that um, you are facing a modulation, which is 2FSK or ASK, etc., then you can use the Panda RF and you can directly set up it in order to attack your target. So now I will directly force the, um, uh, the option with 2FSK like that. And then I will still uh, need some uh, measurement feature. You can also see that you have like the end of the deviation and data rate. For now, we will use uh, this data rate, which is the lowest one, but we can always increase it a little bit. For the data rates, we, we, we can also set up it uh, by end, but 
you know, really uh, from the spectrum analyzer is quite difficult to calculate all of this. Uh, you know, as I said for the de detection feature, the measurement feature is quite magical and you should um, also use it uh, instead of doing that manually. So let's use the measurement feature and then we can see that directly detected some data rate, but you will see that it is a little bit of garbage. We can just look at that by sending some comments like that. All right. Let's see. And if we compare, for example, the data that we have captured, it's, um, you know, in the past, in, uh, in the previous video, you will see that this data is completely garbage. I mean, uh, it's difficult to actually see what is going on. Um, and if you try to transmit the signal directly, it will be received by the receiver. The receiver will also understand it, but uh, still to decode it, uh, it will be difficult. So what I'm suggesting you is uh, to directly, for example, remeasure everything. So I will also clear the data, remeasure everything like that. Okay. I will also. Okay. Just to be sure, I will also make use again of the detection feature. Okay. I will keep the same distance with my remote and then press the measurement feature again. All right, so now, as you saw, for example, um, if your data rate begins, um, you know, at the lowest uh, value at first, is and also detected that uh, the data rate is uh, is this one and not the highest one, um, you know, it's always better, for example, to begin with a, a very small data rate at first, and then you can increase it. Uh, you can uh, try it, try uh, make some tries again. So yeah, after do the, doing that after detecting the right data rates and here i'm just saying you that it is the right data rate but we'll see that after doing a capture so let's now make a capture all of that yeah come on all right so now if we observe that we can see that um we are, yeah, still the data looks, looks like garbage in here. Wait a second. I will just like retry again because you, you have to, I mean, you have to keep the distance also, which is quite painful at first. Yeah. Wait a second. Right. So now I'm just keeping the same distance. Okay. Right, so now I'll capture my data again. On. Right. Yeah, now it looks like something we can work with. So yeah, just remember that we have to uh, keep the same distance. We have to detect uh, the, the frequency uh, with the same distance, then use the measure uh, feature to measure exactly the, uh, the right data rate, and then you can capture the data. And again, if you remember the last video, um, you know, at the end, I was presenting you the Keiju service, which allows you to analyze the rolling code of uh, the signal that you send uh, to, the, to the service. So we have actually the same things uh, in PandaRF because PandaRF directly binds, uh, is directly bind with the Keiju service, uh, it has like the feature to analyze some codes, static codes, as well as rolling code. And if you use rolling code, you can use directly Kaiju. So let's see that in here. Um, so I will just like make appear this window and then let's see uh, how we can do that. So we can actually uh, try to analyze the fixed code. For example, if they, we think that uh, uh, the code we have uh, in here is a fixed code, but if it's not a fixed code, uh, you can 
directly clicked on growing codes and then send everything to Keiju like that directly. And Keiju also make sure that, you know, all the payloads, uh, I mean, there's like maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, 10, um, there's like 10 synchronization words that were that have been generated for the uh, for the push. So you can actually use, for example, the actual one, uh, the actual synchronization counter is uh, the um, 12777. Uh, uh, seven. And so, for example, for the next push, you can use the 1278, uh, for example, which is quite great. So, for example, you can directly try to replay it if you want. Uh, and if, uh, for example, it is, uh, it is good for, for the receiver, the receiver will open the door, which is quite great. So let's uh, now try to test it, uh, you know, in real world, uh, because in here we are just like in a, you know, uh, some sort of environment, so in a confined environment. So let's see how we can uh, make it work in the real world uh, using only a smartphone and uh, the, the Panda RF. And now let's try with the garage drum. And I will let you also discover the other features uh, which are included with this tool, with the application, which allows you also to brute force uh, some preset code commands so you can discover some hidden commands, etc. Uh, you haven't been able, for example, to capture. Uh, and yeah, the, uh, the maintainer also are pretty active. So this tool is always evolving, which is uh, quite good. But yeah, of course, some people will find it a little bit expensive at some point. Um, yeah, because there's like uh, some cheaper tool, like for example, you can, um, you know, you can buy um, NACRF or uh, cheaper uh, uh, Pluto SDR, for example. Uh, yeah, of course, you can also use a number tooth in order to uh, to lower the price a little bit more and also uh, maybe uh, a much more uh, cheaper uh, chip uh, that allows you for example to perform ASK, uh, FSK etc uh, modulation but the thing is that you know with this tool you have everything in one and you know it is ready uh, to be in use and finally I wanted to say that if you like this video and you want to support this channel boop the like button and also subscribe to this channel and yeah if you want to watch or rewatch the, the video that I've made previously I'm just giving you the link at the end of the video so thank you for watching and see you later bye